Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss something slightly different. We're going to discuss the idea behind eye color. And to be more specific, we're going to discuss a brand new experiment that essentially tested how various eye colors seem to have different sensitivity to extremely dim environments, making some colors slightly better in terms of night vision. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. But I guess let's start with the basics when it comes to eye color and the biology behind all of this. And here we have to start with something really important. Unlike previous assumptions that we kind of held for many decades, the eye color is not a very simple trait to explain using a single gene. As a matter of fact, some of the earlier assumptions about blue color suggested that it's basically some kind of a simple recessive trait, something that some people acquire as part of Mendelian genetics. But that turned out to be somewhat incorrect, or actually almost completely incorrect, because the genetics behind eye color are ridiculously complex and seem to involve at least 16 separate genes. And it's even been established that, technically, depending on your ancestry, you can actually end up with quite a different eye color compared to anyone else. But it's really the Europeans, or people of European descent, that seem to have the greatest variety when it comes to the color of their eyes. But it's really the blue color that seems to be the most mysterious. Here's a really intriguing map showing us the overall percentage of light eyes, or basically blue or green eyes, in terms of population percentage. And notice how it seems that the Northern Europe seems to have predominantly blue eyes. Now, since the gene for blue eyes has actually been tracked down to some of the earliest settlers in Near East approximately 42,000 years ago, it is somewhat surprising that it's really in the Northern Europe that now seems to dominate in these lighter colors. Which basically suggests that this very likely started as a random mutation that then established itself in these specific regions. And that also meant that it either very likely provided some kind of an advantage or there was some kind of a fundamental force that increased the natural selection for these types of colors. Some of the previous explanations basically involve the idea behind beauty. Blue-eyed people might generally also have paler complexion and would thus appear slightly more attractive compared to people with different eye colors. And though this might provide explanations for certain types of selection, it doesn't explain everything. Although before we continue, let's briefly actually talk about so what exactly is eye color to begin with? What causes the blue color, brown color and so on? Well, the reality is that the iris pigmentation is actually what's known as a structural color. It basically depends on two things. One is the amount of melanin inside the eyeball, and melanin is a type of a pigment produced by melanocytes that essentially gives us brown skin, but melanin is also something we find inside our eyes. Here's a really cool example of an eye containing just a little bit of melanin very close to the center. And so when it comes to brown eyes, which actually represents something like 80% of all eyes in the world, it's the melanin inside that gives them this color. The more melanin, the darker the eyes. But there's also something else that affects the eye color that then gives us the slight variety inside the eye. Here, it also depends on the overall density of cells inside the stroma or the liquid of the eye. And when it comes to blue eyes, this is actually where things get really interesting. Here, there is really no melanin at all. And so I guess the next question is, but why is it blue though? Why isn't it just, for example, white or completely transparent? Well, here, this is a result of what's known as structural coloration. A feather from a peacock is basically a really good example. Their feathers are not really purple. Or here's another example. These brilliant blue colors are not actually produced by any kind of a blue pigment. And instead are produced by a very specific scattering of light, usually caused by very small particles inside the eye. It's actually somewhat similar to the phenomenon known as Rayleigh scattering that basically makes the sky blue as well. But in this case it has a different name. It's known as Tyndall scattering. Here's one good example where a somewhat blue glass produces orange light in the middle. And there are actually quite a lot of these examples of structural colors in a lot of different animals, but we'll talk more about these examples in one of the future videos coming out really soon. So make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. And so for the most part, it's really the structural coloration that basically gives eyes so much variation. With colors like hazel, dark blue or green, usually produced through moderate amounts of melanin, mixed with different types of scattering. But unlike difference between brown and hazel eyes, when it comes to brown versus blue, the difference is not just in terms of structure, there's also a dramatic genetic difference as well. And specifically because blue eyes tend to also kind of correlate with a lot of other features. 
and specifically much lighter hair and also much lighter skin. Or in other words, a lot less melanin production and more importantly, a much more effective way to produce vitamin D in low light conditions. And so that's actually where things get a little bit more interesting. Because in some sense, blue eyes might actually be just completely accidental, but did provide a really important advantage. And so let's discuss the study that was conducted very recently and find out the results. This was actually conducted by a Japanese researcher living in Europe, who was really fascinated with one simple idea. Not why Europeans seem to have more blue eyes, but why the light conditions in Europe on average seem to be much dimmer. In other words, she basically realized that compared to Japan, on average, inside various buildings, the light conditions were not as bright. And so she wanted to find out if this was a cultural difference or there might be some kind of a biological explanation. And so in essence, her study involved a kind of an eye test, with volunteers at first sitting in darkness and then being asked to read something as the luminosity was increased. And in essence, her study discovered that people with blue eyes were generally able to read things in much darker conditions. For anyone with blue eyes, they were able to read at 0.7 lux on average, whereas brown eyed people could only start reading at 0.82 lux. Or in essence, when the conditions were approximately 17% brighter. And that of course implied that maybe there was some kind of an advantage, biological advantage, to having blue eyes in locations with a lot less light. Which suddenly makes a lot more sense once you look at this map once again. The farther north you go, the more likely you're going to experience much darker conditions, especially in the winters. And so one of the potential conclusions here is that blue eyes, lighter complexion and lighter hair didn't just provide us with more vitamin D, but it also might have allowed people to see better at night during northern winter, which by itself is a very intriguing discovery. But the thing is, we obviously have no idea if this is correct yet. The sample for the study was only 40 people, and there obviously might be some additional parameters that were not considered. Nevertheless, pretty exciting. But blue eyes is not a superpower. As a matter of fact, having blue eyes also means a disadvantage in bright light. Going back to that structural color explanation, turns out that it also causes more light to be scattered around, and as a result, generally, blue eyes tend to dramatically degrade image quality compared to brown eyes. In other words, if you're a blue-eyed person in very bright conditions, you might actually not see things as well as someone with brown eyes. And that by itself might explain why certain European countries tend to have much dimmer environment inside various buildings. So maybe the researcher behind the study did actually discover an intriguing cultural difference. But once again, we should also remember that humans are visual animals. And so if we do find someone more attractive, it dramatically increases the chance for gene propagation. And so the main reason why blue eyes spread across Northern Europe is unlikely to be related to night vision or more vitamin D, but really more because of attractiveness of certain people, which then accidentally provided selective advantage when it came to living in these regions. Higher vitamin D production obviously resulted in better health and would probably result in people looking much better overall. And so definitely a somewhat intriguing discovery and a somewhat intriguing study. But whether this is correct or not, we'll find out in some of the future studies once someone does this with a much bigger sample. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.